Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. This video is a supplement to the review video of the Baofeng UV9G GMRS radio. We'll do a review of the customer programming software that's available for the UV9G. I'll be using version 2.5, which is just being released to fix a bug in the scan control choices for the NOAA channels. Baofeng's CPS software is similar for all of their radios in terms of the user interface, so you might find it useful even if you have a different Baofeng GMRS radio. CPS software allows you to quickly and easily program your radio's options and add channels to your radio's blank memories. The UV9G has three additional sets of do-it-yourself repeater channels and a bunch of receive-only channels you can program in both the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. The UV9G comes with a programming cable that needs to be attached to the radio and to a USB port on your computer. I believe it uses a prolific branded chip in the A side of the USB cable, which may require you to load drivers to your PC if Windows doesn't do that task automatically. Let's jump into the software. So here's a look at version 2.5 of this customer programming software that fixed a couple of little annoyances in the 2.0 version of the software. I got this as a pre-release version from Baofeng, and it's probably the one that's available depending upon when you watch this video, assuming it hasn't been updated beyond the 2.5 level. So let's take a look at the display, and it's very similar to some of the other Baofeng CPS displays. So as we start here, we've got um, our basic Windows menus. We've got File with New, Open, Save, and so forth. In Edit, we can choose what it is we're editing. It comes up with the Channel Information Display. That's this one here. And there's an optional features that we'll look at in a minute uh, that gives us the chance to take a look at uh, uh, some of the other menu items in the radio. In the programming drop-down, we can read from or write to the radio. That is the same as these two icons right here in that secondary menu. In the settings, where we'll look for the port and the language, we're going to be dealing in English, and we'll check on the port number selected uh, when we get the radio connected. And then help has just got to help about. So I've got the programming cable connected to the radio and plugged into my computer using the provided programming uh, cable. And I've got the UV9G uh, turned on. So at this point, I'm going to start the process by going to the port. And I know from experience that the prolific chip is what I think this is using. Uh, shows in my device manager as being assigned to port COM port 4. And so I'll click OK for COM port 4. Uh, and then I'm going to go into the programming mode and I'm going to read from the radio. So let me click read. I'll start. And you can see that it reads from the radio. The little LED on the radio is illuminated showing that it's uh, engaged. And now this channel information is updated and you just heard the radio respond that it's gone back to channel mode out of the programming mode. And so here you can see the various uh, GMRS channels uh, that are available. And so one of the things that I've made a change to is the radio comes with random CTCSS codes in the channels. And so you can see that I've gone through and changed those all to off. To make a change to CTSS codes, you can just scroll through and pick up either the digital codes 
or the CTCSS codes. Uh, they're often probably things you're not going to use, so uh, I've got them all set to off. The other thing that the radio comes in is everything was set to narrow, and as you can see, I've gone through and set my um, wide narrow com commands here to wide on all the channels except for 8 through uh, 14, which are narrow um, by definition within the, uh, the rules from the FCC. So I've got that all set up. Um, I'm not using PTT ID. I've got the busy channel lockout set off by default. I can work with that also in the options um, programming that we'll look at in a minute. And then we've got the scan ad here uh, and all of my GMRS uh, channels. I've got the scan uh, on for those first uh, 30 or 31. And then um, I've got a couple of other local GMRS repeaters programmed on their appropriate um, frequencies or channels. And then I've got the appropriate CTCSS's set. And so I've the ones that I don't have programmed, I've got the scan set to off. Those that I have programmed, I've got the scan set to on. And then I can give a, an abbreviated name here in the name um, column to those various channels. So it's kind of a memory aid, so I don't have to pay that close attention and remember what of these channels is what particular um, frequency. So I'm gonna go scroll down to the bottom, and this is where the other change in this version of the software occurred. And that is uh, these last uh, 10 channels or so, 10 or 11 channels are the, the NOAA channels. And that's real handy for um, you know getting weather broadcasts if you're out and about. Um, but in the original version, when you'd click on this, the, um, the scan ad was only uh, on or off for choice or channel one, channel 117. They fixed that. So now I can turn the scan off on all of my NOAA channels. And the reason for that is that when you find the NOAA in your region, um, it broadcasts all the time. So if you're in SCAN, uh, it's always going to stop there. At least if, even if you're in the, uh, the time operations or TO mode, it's going to linger there on the um, NOAA channel. And that may not be really what you're interested in on any particular day. So I've gone in now and changed all of the scans on my NOAA channels to off. And if I want to listen to the weather, I'll call them up directly. In channels 55 down to um, 116, I can add in other uh, receive only channels. Um, as with many of the, the Baofeng CPSs, if you click on this, you're not going to get anything. You got to start with the frequency. So we'll just pick a random frequency. When you click out of the frequency, everything else then fills in. You can give it a name. Uh, and then the transmitter frequency, you'll notice you can't change because it's a GMRS radio and you can't transmit um, on that. Now, if this were a uh, ham band repeater, you could set the CTCSS um, for the, um, um, the output of that repeater. But otherwise, um, you know, you can keep it to off. And so that's how you um, program other frequencies in. To delete the frequency, go back into that delete on the keyboard. When you click out of it, the rest of the information all deletes. Now let's also then look in our edit mode and what we want to do in our optional features. And then you can see that brings up a different display. And these are a lot of those menus that you can access via the menus, uh, but they're just so much easier to deal with here. So I've got my timeout timer set to a minute, squelch on level five. Let's say I want to change that back to level three. I've got my Vox turned off. The radio is going to speak to me in English. It's going to come up in channel mode. Channel A display is going to be the channel plus the name. Channel B is again channel plus the name. I can make changes there to just the channel or the channel and the frequency should I choose. Um, over here, it's just given some from ranges here, but the, the things that we're interested in, um, mainly channel B because that's our GMRS range. It's UHF. 
the transmitter power is going to go in high except for those four or five low channels at 8 to 14. We've set the default here to wide mode. We're going to step at 2.5 kilohertz and um, we don't have to worry about the, um, the offset. Uh, the GMRS channels generate that offset automatically. I've got the FM mode enabled on the radio and uh, I've got the alarm set to just the site which means the radio will have a little siren that goes off when I press the alarm button but it won't generate a tone that's broadcast. In this area we can choose color for the various functions so the weight backlight is purple when it's receiving it's blue and when it's transmitting it's orange and you can make those changes to suit your fancy. And so those are the various optional features that you can set um, and that's how I've got it set up. You can make those changes to meet your particular need. So in this case I'm going to close that. So I've made the changes to the radio's um, programming and right now then I want to save it. And so I'm going to save. It comes up. I have a, a OneDrive file called Chirp Images that uh, I started when I was using Chirp, but now I've got them all in there. Here's the UV9G, and so I'm going to make a change for what we just did. So as my file name, I'm going to save it with the year 2021, the month 09, and the date 20. And so that's my uh, file that I've just uh, made changes to today. I'm going to save that. So now I have a reference I can go back to if something happens to the programming on the radio. And so now I'm done, so I can click the right button and write back to the radio. Again, click Start. The LED on the radio is flashing. Channel mode. The write's complete. The radio went back to channel mode. And so I can cancel out of this. And now I'm done programming the radio. So at this point all I need to do is take the programming cable off the radio, put the cover back on, and that's how the programming works with version 2.5 of the UV9G CPS. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.